Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you for your word this morning. The 107th Psalm, you said, you sent your word and it healed them. And of course, we know Jesus is the word. Hallelujah. There can absolutely be no doubt whatsoever that it is the perfect will of God that every human being on this planet be healed and well and strong. Amen. Oh, absolutely. Oh, Brother Copeland, what about those terrible, awful people? Hey, this may come as a shock to you, but Jesus' blood was not shed for just a lot of sweet folks. No, 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 no. The worst of the worst sins have been blotted out. Hallelujah. And all it would take is just a few seconds to receive him as Lord and Savior. Amen. But I'll tell you something. He'll heal you and then you can get saved. Amen. Oh, yeah. Amen. Absolutely. Oh, I wish I had to go into the time to go into some things concerning that. But, and maybe as the morning proceeds. Open your Bibles with me to the book of Genesis, please. And let's look in the sixth chapter of Genesis. In the third verse, and the Lord said, my spirit shall not always strive with man for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. Now, someone have a, a, a New Living Translation? Thank you, sir. Yeah. Takes a second because yours is on the wrong side of the page. You know, you know how that goes. <laughs> Oh, this Bible got a lot of stuff in it, doesn't it? All right. Well, find it for me. Verse <laughs> three. Six. Six three. Six three. There it is. Now this is the this is what I, I wanted to see. For they are only mortal flesh. Now see, we're no longer only mortal flesh. We've been born again. When this was written, nobody was born again. Everyone was spiritually dead. Now, when the Bible talks about death, it, it never, unless it specifically says so, it's not talking about physical death. It's talking about spiritual death. Spiritual death is to be separated from God. Spirit separation. Now, you remember the scripture said, and when we were dead in our trespasses and sin, so the threefold cord of the curse 
is spiritual death, sickness, and poverty. That's the threefold cord of the curse that came on Adam when he was what? Separated from God. And God told him, the day you do that, you'll die. Well, he didn't die physically for 900 years. But that day, his spirit became dead to God. Why? He's separated from God. Well, you can't just be separated from God because there's another spirit in this world. You separate from God and you're going to be connected to Satan. Amen. So that's what spiritual death is. And it's very important to, to understand that. Now, only mortal flesh in the future, they will live <laughs> you won't have to explain your Bible to me. <laughs> Come here and help me. <laughs> so. yeah. Okay, where, where's verse one of the sixth chapter? Yeah. All right. And yeah. Okay, now where's verse two? <laughs> All right. Okay, I got it. Thanks, partner. <laughs> Let me quote this to you. And and th this is this is a, a very close rendering the way the, the Hebrew text is written. He is only flesh and his normal life will be 120 years. Normal. And that is without being born again. Now, science has, has uh, declared over and over and over again that this physical body should last 120 years. And they didn't get that figure from the Bible. They finally caught up with the Bible, but that's, that's not where they, see, that, that's the reason the Bible is way ahead of science. And over the years, science is finally catching up and science thought they were way ahead of the Bible, but they've been wrong more than they've been right. And this thing turns out to be right every time. <laughs> Amen. Now, oh, I wish we had time to get into that, but I don't. What I wanted you to, to do now this morning is realize that is just as much the word of God as by his stripes you were healed. I mean, God said that. God said that. So put, lay that as a base under what we're going to see from the word this morning, that it is God's perfect will for you to live 120 years on this earth. Amen. That is his will. If it wasn't his will, he wouldn't have said it. That's right. Amen. 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 Now see that that's, that's not a promise. That's a Bible fact. Amen. Actually, he bore our sins in his own body on the tree that we should live not under sin, but under righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. That's not a promise. That is a Bible fact that has been done and we can lay hold of it any day of the week, 24 hours a day, any day of the month. Uh, hey, it is there and it is established and it is a fact and it's for you. Amen. And it's for me. Now, there are three views 
in, in general. One really it doesn't even, isn't even worth mentioning, but still it's out there that, that God doesn't heal anymore and then blah, blah, blah. Well, you can throw that out because you, I, I can personally throw that out because I've been healed. You understand? So that, that's gone. But then there is another view that is, that is held quite, uh, quite widely that God does heal. Yes. But it's um, uh, the, uh, um, special acts of mercy or some special uh, act of faith and so forth. And, uh, and sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. And, and, and then I, 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 in my mind, I always hear what I've heard so many people say, well, you just never know what God's going. You just never know. Do you have a Bible? Yes. You can know. Yes, yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We praise you, Father. Now, the third view, which is um, the Bible's view, and we're going to see this this morning. Well, in fact, let's go back Let's just turn over there and read that in 1 Peter 2, 24 that I quoted there a moment ago. Good to put your eyes on it. And notice this. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree. Now that was that everybody's sin? Well, it had to be. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting. Life. Whosoever. Amen. He bore our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sin should live under righteousness by whose stripes, you were healed. Well, was all of that on the same day? Did he bear our sins in his own body one day and then bore our sicknesses and diseases some other time? No. No. If you go to what Peter was quoting, if you go back to uh, the 53rd chapter of the book of Isaiah, we know he bore, our, he bore our griefs, he bore our sorrows, he bore our sins, he bore our sicknesses, he bore our diseases, he bore our weaknesses, and he bore our pains. And he bore our poverty and fear. Hallelujah. All on the same cross at the same time, and then he went to hell and paid the price for that curse. My, 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 my. I hadn't been here long. I'd unpreach me happy. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. All on the same day. Now say it. It is the will of God, will of God for me to be well, for me to be strong, and pain free, for me to, to prosper. Spirit, soul, and body, financially and socially. He wants me well, and I take it. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Now then, let's go to the 91st Psalm, please. Psalm 91. Did you ever notice there's something a bit peculiar ab about the wording of the 91st Psalm. If you start, if you just set out to, to put I in every one of those, it, it kind of gets crosswise of you. You have to change it a little bit. Well, it, it's not written wrong. It's right. It's a lack of understanding of what's happening in the 91st Psalm. 
And so we're going to look at it this way this morning. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him will I trust. Now that's the way, that is the way you enter into and dwell in the secret place of the Most High. You can't get in there without believing it in your heart and speaking it with your mouth, and that's what that declaration is. And you notice it says, I will say. I will say it. Okay, well, let's, let's do that. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Now read that with me. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. He's my God, and in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver you. Well, now, whoa. Wait a minute. Now, what's the matter here? I will say of the Lord, He's my refuge, He's my fortress, He's my God, in Him I trust. Surely He will deliver thee? Now, that's what I was talking about. Now, here's what I want to point out to you. I will say of the Lord that is you or me speaking. Surely He will deliver you is Jesus speaking. I said my piece. I'm like Jairus. We studied that last night. Man, I said my faith. Amen. I say of the Lord, I say of the Lord, He's my fortress. He's my God, and in Him I do trust. Now, who is the Lord High Priest over our confession? Jesus. Third chapter of the book of Hebrews. All right, hold your place here and let's turn there because this is what's happening in this psalm. The Lord High Priest, Jesus Himself, Hebrews 3, 1, wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle or the one God sent, a high priest of our confession, Christ Jesus, or the anointed Jesus. Now, I want you to pay really close attention to the word Christ right there and the word apostle. Apostle and Christ are both Greek words. The word apostle means to be sent or a sent one. And we, we talked about earlier what, what Christ literally means. Uh, the, the word itself in Greek just simply means to pour over, to rub, or to smear. But in, in the case of referring to Jesus, it is the Greek translation of the Hebrew word Messiah, which means to pour on, to rub, or to smear. But now you put those two together and you have the one whom God sent and anointed to be high priest. Can you see it there? Now, now look at it again and, and let's, let's see what it's saying because it's telling us something here about the anointing, the anointing of Jesus. 
And this is part of that anointing. It's part of his responsibility, his anointing as high priest. Amen. And there's a lot involved with high, with high priest. And that's what the book of Hebrews is about. Jesus is our Savior. Remember the threefold cord of the curse, spiritual death? Well, the threefold cord of the, uh, of the re of redemption, spiritual death, Jesus is our Savior. Sickness, He's our healer. Poverty, he's our Melchizedek. Yes. He's the high priest of the blessing of the Lord. Amen. He is the high priest that receives tithes in these days. And he's responsible for the opening of the heavens and pouring out blessing that you can't find enough room for it. So say it, he's my savior. He's my savior. He's my healer. He's my healer. And he's my high priest. And he's my high priest. Let's say it like this. He's my savior. He's my savior. He is my healer. He is my healer. And he's my Melchizedek. And he's my Melchizedek. Amen. 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 Now then, notice here, I want you to look, pay careful attention to this. Wherefore, Holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the one whom God sent and anointed to be high priest of our con of pro profession, Jesus. Now, that word translated profession, exactly the same word as confession. It means to say the same thing as. So when we confess with our mouth, he is Lord, man, it activated the high priest, the savior, amen. Right then you received him. Now, Stay right with that. He is anointed high priest over his words in our heart and mouth. You're not just standing there speaking to that mountain by yourself. He's right there. If you were just by yourself and you spoke to the mountain, probably wouldn't have much effect but you're not by yourself, sweetheart. Number one, you're speaking his word. Number two, he's responsible for you and his word. Right. Glory to God. Oh, I'll tell you that, that brings a shout and, <laughs> and, and, and my heart when I realize. Now, okay, now are, are, we, are we steady with that? Are we strong with that? All right, let's go back over there to the 91st Psalm now. And you can see that that's what's happening right here in this Psalm the high priest of our confession, my confession is, I say of the Lord, he is my refuge, he is my fortress, he is my God, and in him I do trust. Now, let me, let me just, just for clarification here, so you, I want you, you must, we must be on the same page with this. I want the same thing going on, the same pictures going on in your mind that are going in mine right now. I say of the Lord, he's my refuge. He is my fortress. He is my God. And in him, I do trust. Bing, you just got born again. Now, does that illustrate it where, where we can see the, 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 what we're gleaning out of this this morning? Because we're looking at our healing and longevity here this morning. That's the last thing I said. 
Now listen to my high priest. Surely, Kenneth, he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. Kenneth, he will cover you with his feathers and under his wings shall you trust. His truth shall be your shield and your buckler. Now, what is the process taking place here? Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I have declared that he's my God, he's my fortress, and I trust him. And now Jesus starts feeding me the word, starts feeding me the promises. My faith is getting stronger. Every word he says, it's getting stronger. Every word, I'm I'm getting stronger because he's talking to me. He's talking to me and promising me. He's telling me, he's telling me his plans and and telling me what he's doing for me and what I can expect here. Now look at it. Kenneth, you'll not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the error that flies by day. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. (laughs) You will not be afraid, yes, sir, by the terror of the terror of a night, nor the arrow that flies by day. You'll not be afraid for the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand, Kenneth, will fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come nigh you. Hallelujah. Lord, that. Lord, that, that's wonderful. Only with your eyes shall you behold and see the reward of the wicked. And I wrote in my Bible there, and, and you're free to do this if you'd like. <laughs> I put a little arrow right between the word eyes and shall. Let me read it to you. Only with your eyes like a bad movie. Amen. <laughs> Only with your eyes. You walk out of the theater and you say, that was awful, but it didn't hurt you. (laughs) It didn't get on you. Amen. Shall you receive the reward? Shall you see the reward of the wicked? Now, listen, this proves my point right here about uh, who's doing the, the speaking here. Because, Kenneth, you have made the Lord which is my refuge, even the most high, your habitation, there shall no evil befall you and neither shall any plague come nigh your dwelling. See what the Lord high priest is saying? He's saying, son, he's my God too. He's the God that raised me from the dead. He's the God that saw to it that I didn't get stuck in hell and couldn't get out. He's the one, he's the one that did healed all the sick. He, when I was in my ministry on the earth, for it was the father that dwelled within me. He did the work and you have made him your habitation. And you could go a little bit further with that. You have made him your habitation. Therefore, I'm your high priest and I'm responsible and I'm here, son. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, just for a moment, think about the 23rd Psalm because the same thing is true in the 23rd Psalm. Amen. He's the shepherd. In this Psalm, he's the high priest. But in the 23rd Psalm, he's the great shepherd. Leads us beside the still waters. Praise God. And green pastures. Sheep don't have to hunt the pasture. The shepherd does that. Amen. Now, there are some goofy sheep that get off on their own hunt or own pasture, but it won't long. They'll be back. But even when you do that, the shepherd's out hunting you. He's going to find you and get you back over here where you belong so you don't starve to death out there in the, in the weeds, man. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, and um, even though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, well, can you see the valley of the shadow of death here in the 91st Psalm? Of course you can. You're walking through the valley of the shadow of death. You'll have no fear. Well, why? 
Why should I not have fear? Because my great shepherd, my great high priest is right there with me and he's the biggest thing in the valley. He is the biggest thing in this valley and I'm following him. Hallelujah. Praise God. Is, is, this, is, this, is this doing you some good this morning? Yes, my, my, my. For he will give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. Now, that verse covers from verse 3 all the way down through verse 10. He has given his angels charge over you to keep you in all of these ways. Those angels are hearkening unto the voice of the word. Well, the voice of the word came out of your mouth. He's my God, he's my fortress and I trust him. Now Jesus is speaking and those angels have to listen. Listen, he's the Lord of the host. Amen. Amen. He's commander in chief. Yes. <laughs> when he said these things and we take it and we believe it, hey, they have to be on the job. Amen. Hallelujah. How you doing, partner? You all right? Good. <laughs> They shall bear you up in their hands, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Every time we get in the airplane, every time we activate this song. Amen. And before we put the power up, Father, we plead the blood over this airplane today. You ought to do this in your car. You ought not ever get out in public without, without, without your, your armor and your shield and the blessing wall up. Amen. We plead the blood over this airplane today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth for protection against every evil spirit, every evil thing, Every evil person, every evil plan of the devil is now bound and stopped and thwarted. Ministering spirits, lift us up lest we dash our foot against a stone and keep us in all of our ways today according to the 91st Psalm. And Father, we, we, we receive it, and I'm asking you to bless our partners today beyond measure. Hallelujah. Amen. And then take hold of those throttles and jam them forward. Hallelujah. Now, see, a lot of people do this. A lot of people say, Oh, Lord, be with me today on this trip. You just wasted your breath, brother. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you even to the end of the world or the end of the age. Now see, this, this, this is activating what God has already said. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, let's go back in here now. You will not be afraid for the terror. Well, now, that right there, oh man, that covers, that, that covers this whole terrorism thing. It covers the, the, the terror of, of, um, of, of a neighborhood full of bad actors. I mean, that, that covers that. You don't be afraid of that by night or for the arrow or the missile or the stray bullet that flies by night. No, no. People that stood on this uh, on 9-11 are still with us. Right. Amen. Amen. I have a good, good friend of mine, a partner to this ministry and good personal friend. 
And he, he's, a, <laughs> he, he's, a, he's a strange uh, kind of a guy. And uh, he's, um, uh, when he retired from the United States Army, he, he was a special forces, full colonel, and he pastors a church. Now that's a little different. <laughs> and um, we, he, he, he pastors in Alaska and, and we were in Alaska at, at this time. And uh, he said, Kenneth, I'm, I'm going to be deployed again. And he said, would you and, and Gloria please lay hands on me and, and, uh, and, and on my wife and so forth. I said, sure. So we did that day. And I said, Keith, let me, let me tell you something now. I said, this, this has been a, something that's been proven over the years. And where I first found out about it was from uh, an officer, um, infantry officer in World War I. And I related it to him. Because he told me, he said, I'm, I've been put in command of a high casualty unit and he said, um, and he, we were talking about praying about that. I said, Keith, you have every man in your outfit memorize the 91st Psalm. And you have them memorize it just like they had to memorize the, the general orders when they first came into the army. Or, and of course that's in, in other branches of service too, but we're talking about army here. And, um, the same thing that you just walk up to one of them any day in the week and say, verse five, I'll not be afraid of, <laughs> of the terror. And I'll not be afraid of the missiles. I'll not be afraid what flies by, by night or by day. Make a, any, any verse you call out, he, he got to quote it to you. Yeah, he said, I'll do that. And then I said, call me. And let me know how it works out. Well, of course, he, he went on to Iraq and uh, <laughs> Gloria and I were sound asleep. It was about three o'clock one morning and the phone rang. I answered it and it's Colonel uh, Keith Kerber. He hollered over that telephone. <laughs> He's so excited. He said, I just couldn't wait to call you. He said, Kenneth, this was the end of his, the end of his tour. He said, Kenneth, we had zero casualties. Zero. They went from a dangerously high casualty unit to zero. Zero. He called me sometime later. He said, I got a question I want to ask. He said, after I left there, the unit went, went started having casualties again. I said, well, yeah, Keith, of course. I said, you undoubtedly had some men in that outfit that stayed with that. And particularly men that know the Lord that stayed with it. But the others, when, you know, when, when you left, they didn't have to quote that anymore. But there you have it. They were activating the soldier's song. That's what it's called, it's called the soldier's song. Did you ever wonder where 911 came from? Nine, one, one, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Lord. That, that's, that's where that phone number came from. Hallelujah. All right. He'll cover you with his feathers and under his wings shall you trust. His truth shall be your shield and your buckler. You'll not be afraid of terror by night and the air that flies by day, nor for the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor for the destruction that wastes at noonday. Pestilence 
is all part of the curse of sickness and disease, all kinds of, of sicknesses, all, all kinds of strange um, warfare could be put underneath that. Uh, chemical warfare, biological warfare. In the 61st verse of the 28th chapter of Deuteronomy, which is the curse of the law, says all sickness and all disease that's not written in this book of the law is under that curse and will come on you. Amen. Amen. See, all of it. I don't care how many new, new diseases they come up with. Right. They can't find one that's not covered in there. Amen. I mean, because you, <laughs> the devil can't come up with anything new. He's not a creator. You understand this? He doesn't have anything new. Amen. Amen. He can't do that. I mean, when you get on this song, I'm telling you right now, you got him by the nose and then nothing he can do about it. You just give it a good twist and say, get on your knees. Amen. But now here's another thing. Whatever you're believing for, in this case, we're talking about, about healing, right? Don't go into this, don't go into this battle without being well armed in the word. Now this is part of your, this is part of your, your, your weaponry right here. And our weapons of our warfare are not carnal, they're power, they're mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds, amen. So you let the word fight its own fight, amen. A lot of people, you, you ask them, you know, uh, what, what scripture are you standing on for your healing? Well, you know, all of them, I guess. <laughs> no, you're not. Amen. There's no use pulling an empty gun on anybody. <laughs> no, it just laugh at you. But let me tell you what, sweetheart, you pull that sword on him. <coughs> Amen. And you let him run up on that a few times. He comes storming in there over you and you just start quoting that 91st Psalm to him. You just start quoting 1 Peter 2, 24. Amen. Amen. Just stick it in him and twist it. Hallelujah. Amen. Say, Satan, this is who I am. This is what I have. Glory to God. I'm not trying to get this. This belongs to me. Jesus is my Lord and Savior. He's the Lord, high priest over this psalm. Glory to God. Now notice this. You will tread upon the lion and the adder and the young lion and the dragon. You will trample underfoot. Amen. You believe that? Well, of course you do. Because now, suddenly we've changed persons again. <laughs> From verse 14 on is the voice of your heavenly Father. Look at this. Because he, he is me. Because he, well, to whom is he speaking? He's talking to Jesus about me. Whoa. Because Kenneth has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I'll set him on high. Do we sit on high? Yes. We've been raised up together and made to sit together with him in the heavenly places far above all principalities and powers, far above, far above, far above. He 
is the head and we're the body. The feet are in the body. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Far above principalities and powers. He set his love on me. And, and just so, so much. I do this a lot. I begin to praise God and I, and I say, Father, I, 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 like to, I like to make a combination of the uh, of, of what was said in the old covenant, bring it over into the new covenant. I want to praise you, Lord. I want to praise you, my heavenly Father. I love you with all of my heart, all of my soul, all of my mind, and all of my strength. I love my neighbor as myself because that pleases you. And I, now here I come over in the new covenant. And I love the brethren even as you love the brethren and gave yourself a ransom for us all. Gave yourself for us. Gave yourself to us. Then, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, whose I am and whom I serve, I place my love upon you today. Amen. Hallelujah. I bless you today with all my heart and all my soul. Hallelujah. Because he set his love upon me, I'll deliver him. I'll set him on high because he hath known my name. Now, that is referring to covenant authority of the believer. Known my name indicates authority. Amen. Amen. In other words, he, he understands and knows his authority in me and he uses it. Amen. Amen. Because he's put his love upon me and he has known my name, he'll call on me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. And with long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. Amen. Now, wait a minute. Hold it. Back up just a second. What does long life mean? We've, we've, it's, it's sitting on the rock base, right? God's referring to the 120 years. He established that long before. He established that back here in book number one. <laughs> With long life. What life? 120 years. Hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful? I mean, uh, hey, glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Now, I had, I noticed back when, um, oh, I had just I, I just, I was approaching 70. And of course, you know, the devil's, trying to beat me around the head about it. And um, I was, well, in fact, let me back up here a second. I'll tell you a little, little story that happened. When um, the Lord put that first Citation 10 in this ministry, that's the fastest civilian airplane in the world. And, uh, and so I'm praying about and rolling it over in my mind about it you know, going through school on that airplane and training on it. It's a three week school. And actually they condensed them between four and five weeks into three weeks on this thing. And you know, the devil said, yeah, you old man, what are you, what are you doing going in there with all them young guys, you know, working on me. Well, during that school, the first week of that school, I turned 69. And so turn to the 119th Psalm. Psalm 119. And um, Dwayne and I, the, uh, our chief pilot, we went through school together. We stood on this scripture in the 97th verse. 
Oh, how I love your law. We would say, oh, how I love your word. It is my meditation all day. You through your commandments has made me wiser than my enemies for they, your commandments, are ever with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers for your testimonies of my meditation or what you have said about me in your word is what I'm meditating on. I'm not meditating on the problem. I'm meditating on what you said in your word. I understand more than the ancients because I keep your precepts. Now, how could you understand more than the ancients? Because if we do this thing right, every generation should be smarter than the last one because we take what we learn from the word from our parents, then therein lies most of the problem. We learned a lot of religion and then a lot of uh, ideas that were really not revelation from the word. Now I'm not faulting our parents, but I'll fault you and me if we don't do better than that. Amen. 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 So we took that and stood on it. And then we confessed that thing every morning. And, and as we studied, you know, during the day and all that. And sure enough, eight o'clock, first morning, first instructor introduced himself. And he said, I'm retired United States Navy. At the time of my retirement, I had flown everything in the Navy's inventory. And this type rating on the Citation 10 is the most intense type rating I have ever. I'm like, <laughs> what? <laughs> this guy's retired Navy. This guy's, this, this, he's flown some pretty nasty airplanes, you know. And he says the type rating on this Citation 10 was the most intensive one that he'd taken. And the devil said, yeah, and there you sit, old man. (laughs) I said, no, 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 I'm wiser than, I'm wiser than he is. He's my teacher. I got the Holy Ghost with me. I got access to the man. I got access to the, not the one that designed the airplane, but the one that invented it. Hallelujah. The greater one is on the inside of me. But boy, I'll tell you what, I had to keep confessing it every little bit. I'll keep confessing it, you know. Then that first hour was over with and we walked outside and this young man that he was, he was about, I'd say probably 24, 25 years old. (laughs) And um, we walked outside. He said, Whoa, man. He said, that's like drinking out of a fire hose. I thought, yeah, well, that's all right, sonny boy. You'll be okay. I want you to know we went through that whole course. God helped us and trained us and and taught us through that whole thing. It was absolutely marvelous. And we aced every test, aced that check ride, went right on through this whole thing. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You can do the same thing. It's available to you. Amen. Glory. Well, I noticed then I turned 70 and, and I, I noticed some things uh, with my physical body and so forth and so on. And um, I spent some time praying about it. And, so, and, and, and the Lord said this to me. He said, Kenneth, well, one of the things I took after my mother's side of the family and my grandfather, grandmother, great grandfather, great grandmother, and the, the family around that as I looked up the family tree and so forth, they all died mid to late 70s. And, uh, and of course, you know, the devil's trying to use that on me too. Well, the Lord said to me, He said, Kenneth, you're paying attention to your natural DNA. He said, don't you remember in my word, it says you're born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible by the word of God that lives in the body of heaven. I said, yes, sir. He said, you've got my spiritual DNA. He said, I'm your father's son. 
And your DNA and Jesus' DNA are exact. Amen. You're exactly like him. You're not a little like him. You're like Adam was when I created him. He was exactly like me in every respect, in likeness and image. Whoa. So I began to put pressure on that. And these other things that show up, and I said, no, 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 that, that's the natural side of the family. This is the supernatural side of the family. And I noticed this, as my physical DNA began to lead me down this way, my spiritual DNA came in and arrested that. And in, in a lot of ways, I'm talking about physically now, in a lot of ways, I'm stronger today than I was 20, 25 years ago. And so this is very important. This is extremely important. Now, your spiritual DNA was programmed to keep your body strong for 120 years. Now, where's the problem? There's really, let let me, let me, let me take this another step further. When you turn over there to the book of Leviticus and so forth, and you, you run into all of those food laws. Oh, people don't want to hear that. Well, no, this is new covenant. We can eat anything you want to. Not live 120 years, you can't. God hadn't changed. His word hadn't changed and pigs haven't changed. A pig is still a pig and he ain't fit to eat. Now I know some of you say, well, you know, I think I'll go on home now. <laughs> no. Well, brother Copeland, that was under the law. Well, the reason it was under the law, God made it a law to keep them from eating pigs. Because he didn't create that, he didn't create the swine for food. Amen. That thing had another purpose. Yes. Now, all, all of the, the foods that are in the good column, that whole thing is designed based on a hundred and twenty years. It's not based on you eating something you don't want to eat. It's based on this physical body being nourished as it should for that whole 120 year period of time. Because that's the bedrock upon which it sits. Is that statement God made, his days are 120 years. Well, you ought to be healed for the whole 120 year period of time. The, uh, that, the physical part of it, that, that's not having correct spiritual food, not having correct mental or intellectual food, and not having correct physical food. Amen. Because you gotta eat spirit, soul, and body. And Jesus made the statement, man doesn't live by bread alone, but by every word proceeds out of the mouth of God. So the spiritual food is important. Now, religion is not spiritual food. No. It, it, and uh, it, it, religious tradition and so forth won't feed your spirit. But the integrity of the written word will feed your spirit. And when your spirit is well fed, you have faith. Because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You can't get strong spiritually by hearing someone say, you never know what God's going to do. <laughs> well, tradition never knows what he's going to do, but word people know because he's going to do exactly what he said he's going to do. Amen? Amen. So you can, you can see the principle. Now, the other thing that is terribly damaging is unforgiveness. Not walking in the law of love. And since it is a law, 
that we love the Lord our God and one another even as God loves us. It is a law. It is not optional. And it is the key issue to long life. Amen. That has to be in place. You can have, I mean, you can eat right and, and all that, but you're feeding your physical body right. But if you're not keeping the law of love, then you're not feeding your spirit right. Amen. It can't. That's, that's poison yes, to the human spirit. It's poison to the human brain. Fear and unforgiveness thoughts have been proved. How many of you watch Caroline Leaf on our on our brain? It has been proven scientifically that fear and Unforgiving thoughts damage the brain. Now you hear all kinds, you know, all kinds of funny jokes and stuff about getting old and can't remember anything. But the, the problem is not with the brain because the brain is the only physical organ that gets better with age. The problem is what the thing is being fed both spiritually, intellectually, and physically. And then it starts having all kinds of chaos, particularly if there's uh, fear and unbelief because you get, the brain gets into chaos, then the, the, the chemistry of the physical body is not working like it's supposed to. Anyway, the, I said all that to say this, we're supposed to be well. We're supposed to be healed. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Could I add something this morning? Yes, ma'am. I realized not long ago that everything that the scripture says not to eat that's unclean, they're scavengers. Yeah. And they have a sorry diet. <laughs> yeah, they do. Pigs eat slop. <laughs> this may ruin your lunch, but. <laughs> and what else? What else is unclean? Pigs eat, buzzards eat dead things. We don't eat buzzards. That's good. <laughs> but pigs don't have a good, they're not a healthy eater. What else would be uh, that the scripture says is unclean, you just don't eat it. Yeah. That's, that's the primary reason because. Their, their physical anatomy in one way or another is, is not uh, conducive to the health of the human body. Yeah, that's right. All of those animals that, for instance, you're not supposed to be eating cats. But they're, you know, but they're in every, when I say cat, people think about a house cat, you know, but there are people that, that hunt and eat lions and so forth. They're not supposed to be eating that. It, they're, 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 you and I, they eat and then we eat them, so we wind up eating what they ate. That's right. Now you think about giving, you think about giving uh, what the scripture calls a clean animal, but you feed that animal in a way that it, he's no longer fit to eat. Or you give him hormones or growth yeah. hormones yeah. or something and all of that. And for years, I don't know whether they still do it or not because I don't eat that anymore, but they, for years they fed chickens arsenic to make them, to make them grow fast. And they come, well, hey, the chicken eats arsenic, you eat the chicken, you got the arsenic. That's right. That's, 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 that's not all that hard to understand. Sorry if we ruined your lunch plans. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. But now you can talk, you can say what you want to say about it. Glory are not on, are not on blood pressure medicine. We're, we're, not on, we're, we're not on heart medicine. We're not on sugar medicine or, or all of that uh, at all. At all. And let's see. Well, I'll be 80 the first week next month. So... 
And it's just a whole lot of ways. Like I said earlier, I'm, I'm stronger today than I was a number of years ago. And I'm getting stronger instead of weaker. Now, there's some things I'm believing God for. Don't misunderstand me. There's, there's some things that I'm actively believing and, 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 and taking hold of, even as we speak, praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Now, are you receiving this morning? Yes, sir. Well, this whole, the, the, this, this whole uh, time this morning is, has been spent establishing the fact that healing belongs to you and me. It is paid for lock, stock and barrel. And there was an enormous price paid for it. And if you will just relax and receive it, it's belonged to you for 2000 years. There's a lot, a whole, I know this is a problem with me. I, the Lord said to me not, not long. Well, would you like to hear about something absolutely supernatural? Yes. <laughs> we were in um, Venezuela earlier this year and I had some questions about some things and some things that I'm praying about and, and, and so forth. And, and, um, I had gone back and, and gotten, uh, I, I went, the, the Lord in, instructed me about a year ago. He said, I want you to go back to total immersion in my word. Amen. Which meant cut that TV off. <laughs> Amen. You get in the word of God and you stay there night and day. I got things I'm, I need to talk to you about and so forth and so on. I did that. Well, I went back to my, my Kenneth Hagin uh, messages, what used to be tapes, but they're not tapes anymore. And, you know, you can go to bed with your phone now and listen to yes. Brother Hagin. And, and Gloria and I do that. Oh my, my, do we enjoy that. Just sit the telephone right between the two of us. Uh, used to is a tape recorder about that big. And then it shrunk up to one about that big. Then it shrunk up to one about that big. But today you got your telephone. <laughs> Lay it right there in the bed and you and Gloria and Brother Hagin, you know. <laughs> The other night, a few weeks ago, I, I'm telling you, the joy of the Lord hit that bedroom. It got on me. So I jumped out of bed and started dancing and jumping around the room. And I'm just laughing and the shouting glory is laying over there laughing at me. And I'm running around the end of that room. And I jumped up in the middle of the bed and grabbed her and kissed her six times just as fast as I could. I mean, it looked like the end of World War II, you know, how I grabbed her. Oh yeah, that'd do something for you, brother. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, I guess I was in Venezuela and it was after the service and of course, you know, I'm, I'm wide eyed like this and I, I laid down there and turned my telephone on and, and I, I had prayed over it. I said, and the Lord showed me that this, this is the series I want you listening to right now. So, good, you know. So I laid down and I'm listening to Brother Hagen and he, he began to operate in the word of knowledge, prophetic anointing of the prophet. And he began to speak. He said, now this is for a minister. And he began to talk about some things. And he said, <laughs> now that's not for you, Ken, but he said, now, and he began to talk to me. I forgot that I was even in that meeting. <laughs> he started talking to me. And he started answering the question that I went to bed with. Wow. That meeting was 18 years ago. No time, the distance in the realm of the spirit. And one of the things he said that answered a big thing for me, he said, now, Kenneth, you have been too analytical. He said, I'm not talking about things that come from the outside. He said, I'm talking about things that come from the inside and come up and you, you, you uh, grasp them and take hold of them with your mind. 
But then you let your mind become too analytical and, and, it, and it cuts you off from the spirit. Whoa. I didn't remember that. That's 18 years ago. But there it was and just perfectly dovetailed right in with the questions that I was asking him and where I am right now in the Lord. Now, do you think that doesn't do something for you? Amen. Now, what would have happened if I'd just come in after that and after that meeting's over, flip the television on and watch, you know, a bunch of idiots talk about idiotic things. <laughs> and, and, you know, well, forgive me, Lord, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> <laughs> but, but anyway, <laughs> you understand what I'm, what I'm saying? I, w- I would have missed that word. Amen. Amen. Now God could have gotten it through to me and talked to me about it without that telephone. But think what it did for me. The supernatural aspect of it was so precious to me. I mean, it, it, that's, that's a sacred thing to me. That's just absolutely marvelous. Well, now (laughs) every message I've listened to since then, I'm thinking, was I in that service? Did I hear? And sure enough, sure enough, amen. It's (laughs) glory to God, hallelujah. That'll make you jump out of the bed and run around the room and kiss your wife six times, hallelujah. (laughs) Amen. Now, and let's move now over into the book of Matthew. And we'll move into the receiving part of this message this morning. Matthew chapter nine, we're going to read this incident from uh, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Chapter nine, verse one, he entered into a ship and passed over and came into his own city. Behold, they brought to him a man sick of the palsy, lying on a bed. Jesus, seeing their faith, said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, be of good cheer, thy sins be forgiven thee. Now I want you to notice and make note of be of good cheer. That particular phrase doesn't come up in the other two. So make note of that. Be of good cheer, thy sins be forgiven thee. So I'm going to tell all of you this morning, I don't care what's going on in your body. I don't care what's happening in you now. Cheer up! Cheer up! You need to learn to do that when you first get out of bed in the morning. I don't feel like cheering up. Yeah, you do. Yeah. You just walk in there and say, joy. See, the joy of the Lord is your strength. It's, it's part of the healing process. It's obvious this man was sin worried. It may be one of the, re- probably one of the reasons why this sickness, this palsy ha- had worked in his body to the point where it was about to kill him. And Jesus just fixed that. Cheer up, boy. Hallelujah. So make make a note of the cheer up. Be of good cheer, thy sins be forgiven thee. And certain of the scribes said within themselves, this man blasphemes. Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, wherefore think you evil in your heart? Whether it is easier to say, thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, arise and walk, that you may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. Then saith he to the sick of the palsy, arise, take up your bed and go home. He arose, departed to his house. Notice this, the power to forgive and the power to heal the body are one and the same. So when one is not in forgiveness, 
when you're not exercising forgiveness, you're aiding the sickness and the disease because the power to forgive is the power to heal. My, 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 my. Now, let's go over to Mark chapter 2. And let's look at verse 1. And again, he entered into Capernaum after some days, and it was noise that he was in the house. This was his house in Capernaum there by the, by the, by the, the lakeside. Straightway many were gathered together insomuch that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much about the door. And he preached the word unto them. Now make a note of that one. He preached the word. And they come unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. When they could not come nigh unto the, for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let him down where in the, uh, they let down the bed where in, where in the sick of the palsy lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the sick of the palsy, son, thy sins be forgiven thee. There were certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their heart, why does this man thus speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God only? Immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they so reasoned within themselves, he said, why reason these things in your heart? Whether is it easier to say to the sick of the palsy, thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, arise, take up your bed and walk, that you may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. He said to the sick of the palsy, I say unto you, arise, take up your bed, go your way to thine house. Now, Luke chapter 5. We're going to see something else again here in the fifth chapter of Luke. Verse 17. And it came to pass on a certain day as he was teaching... So he was preaching and he was teaching. Amen. Amen. Now, how does faith come? Faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now, there's another statement here. I, I want you to look at this. Notice it very, very carefully. And um, there were Pharisees, doctors of the law sitting by, which were come out of every town of Galilee, Judea, and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Huh? It, it, the power was present to heal them. Well, if the power was present to heal them, the power was present to forgive them. But they didn't get it. Why? They stopped listening to his teaching and preaching and got over in their religious thinking. Now, while they're sitting there thinking about him uh, speaking blasphemies, then they're no longer hearing anything he says. They're listening to their mind say, there's something wrong with him. Well, you know what that'll do to your faith. It'll kill it. And you don't have to, you, you don't have, it doesn't have to be something that uh, drastic either. You can just be sitting there thinking, you know, I wonder why Brother Copeland wears so many blue suits. <laughs> well, that's simple. Gloria likes blue suits. Amen. She also likes gold suits too. But I like blue suits because Gloria likes blue suits. And I found out God likes blue suits because the, go check out the high priest clothes. <laughs> Amen. But see, you, I, I, you can just get over and start thinking about something like that and not hear a, just be a whole line of something there. And if the devil is doing it, I'll guarantee you it was a line you needed to hear to receive your healing. That's just the way he does things. Amen. So I wanted you to notice all of those 
because you put all of that together, had they been listening and they could have not only received their forgiveness, not only could they have cheered up, but they could have received healing just the same as this one man did. Everybody in the room, the presence was there. The healing power of God was there because Jesus was in the room. He's the healer and he's trying to get all of them healed. He's trying to get all of them forgiven. He's trying to get all of them out of their problems, praise God, and bring a jubilee. That's what he's doing here this morning. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. I said glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Let's praise the Lord. Let's praise the Lord. Let's praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Healing and long life is God's plan. It's God's way. It's God's word. And he is here to heal you right now. Glory to God. Somebody just got a really bad sore throat healed right then, just while I was speaking that. And now some of you came today noticing symptoms, beginning of flu, symptoms of beginning of cold. I curse those symptoms in the name of Jesus. Disappear right now. Hallelujah. I mean it. Disappear. Right now you disappear. Glory. Yes, sir. We can do that, Lauren. Thank you. Let's all catch hands with the person there next to you. And if you can reach across the aisle, fine. If you can't, that's okay. But we're going to do this as a congregation this morning. Agree with it in your heart, with all your heart. Father, Father I make it official. In obedience to your command and to your desire. I forgive, I forgive. If, I if I have ought against any, I forgive. I am determined to forgive. I'm determined to walk in love. I confess the sin of unforgiveness, unforgiveness. criticism, criticism. judging, and all forms of unforgiveness. Cleanse my spirit. Cleanse my mind. Cleanse my body of all fear, doubt and unbelief that comes from unforgiveness. I receive my forgiveness as I forgive others. Now just stop and think about that just a second. How did Jesus say? How did he say it? Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us. Forgive us as we forgive. Put it in the first person. Forgive me as I forgive those that have trespassed against me. Hallelujah. What did he say? Your will be done on earth. Your will be done in this, in, in, in this building today and online, on the God channel, everybody that's listening and watching. Amen? Amen. What, well, we've, we've absolutely determined from the Bible what his will is. His will is for you to be well. His will is for your mind to be clear and sharp. It's his will for you to live 120 years uh, of of satisfied life. Hallelujah. 
Amen. So take it. Release all that stuff. Get all that stuff out. Of it. Just turn it loose. Don't wait till you feel better. Declare it by faith. Declare it by faith. They're forgiven. Glory to God. I release it. They're forgiven right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now receive your healing. Now just lift both hands and just form this big old funnel and receive. Sin, sickness, demons, and fear, all kinds of curse, all kinds of deadly disease in the name of Jesus, we bind you and cast you out of this place. Get out of here right now. You loose God's people. In the name of Jesus, whose I am and whom I serve, take your hands off of God's property. You take your hand off of every mind in this place. You take your hand off of ears. You take your hand off of everybody, 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 everybody. Hallelujah. Gloria, you and George, come on up here. Glory to God. Tracy, you come on up. Praise God. Terry Mize, you come on up. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Now lay both hands on top of your head and boldly declare, I receive my healing in my head. I receive healing in my ears. I receive healing for my brain. Brain cells live and not die. Memory come alive, Memory come alive and not die. I receive, I receive healing in my eyes. I receive healing in my sinuses. I receive healing in my nose. I receive healing in my mouth. I receive healing for my tongue, my tonsils, my throat. In the name of Jesus, I receive healing in my neck. I receive restoration for my spine all the way from my brain stem to my tailbone. A new spine. No more back pain. No more disc problems. No more nerve problems. Throughout my whole body, I receive peace for my whole nervous system. I receive healing in my shoulders. I receive healing in my back. All the muscles in my back. All of the skeleton of my body. All the bones. All the marrow. And my entire physical skeleton. I receive healing. I receive, I receive restoration. I receive my, elbows my elbows are healed. My wrists are healed. My, my fingers, my, fingers, my, thumbs, my thumbs, thumbs, all the joints of my body. All the joints of my body. Arthritis, leave my body. Arthritis, leave my body. You're under the curse and I'm redeemed from the curse. Weakness and pain, leave this body now. Hips, you receive your healing. I receive supernatural hip replacement. I receive supernatural knee replacement. I receive healing in my veins. Arteries. I rebuke you, plaque. I cast you out of my arteries and veins. 
in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. My arteries are cleansed by the washing of the water of the Word. I'll not have a stroke. I'll not have a heart attack. I'm healed in the name of Jesus. Now, if you've already experienced a, a, a stroke or a heart attack, put your hand right there and say, in the name of Jesus, I receive a new heart. I take a new heart. It's mine. I take a new heart. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Heart attacks are over for me. Strokes are over for me. Done for. Finished in my life. I'll not have that. I'll not have that. Glory to God, I'll not have it. Someone just received healing, miraculous healing in your ears. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Praise God. Tinnitus is healed. Ringing in the ears, noisy ears. Praise God. I receive restoration for my, for the, the structure of my ears. In the name of Jesus. Glory, glory, glory. Glory, 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 glory. Praise God. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Praise and worship. Praise and worship. Begin to sing your healing. Begin to sing your healing. Glory to God, I'm healed in my knees. Glory to God, I'm healed in my ears. Glory to God, I'm healed in my ears. I'm healed in my eyes. I'm healed in my sinuses, glory to God. Sinus, infected sinuses are being healed and cleared up right now. You can breathe, glory to God. Oh, I receive healing in my lungs. I receive healing in my lungs. New lungs. Praise God. I receive healing and deliverance from sugar diabetes, both, both one and two type diabetes is healed, supernaturally healed right now. Pancreas, you live and not die. Glory to God. Gallbladder, you're healed. You're healed, gallbladder. You live and not die. Liver, you are healed. <clears throat> Liver cancer, you are healed in the name of Jesus. Glory, glory, glory. <clears throat> glory, glory. <clears throat> Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Gloria, anything you've got, Terry, anything you've got? And any of you, just, just, I mean, just jump in here. Praise God, George. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank God. Thank God. The healer is working right now. <clears throat> the healer is working right now. We are redeemed from the curse of the law. Hallelujah. Say it. We are redeemed from the curse of the law. And we walk in the fullest degree of the blessing. We are redeemed from the curse. Listed in Deuteronomy 28. <clears throat> One of the things that we are redeemed from are the plagues of thy seed, even great plagues of long continuance and sore sicknesses of long continuance. <clears throat> Several translations say severe and lingering illness, grievous sickness of long duration, Severe, prolonged diseases, sicknesses that are persistent and severe. In the name of Jesus. 
In the name of Jesus, we declare every sickness of long continuance. You bow your knee right now. <clears throat> Diseases that have been going on for a long time, you cease and desist now in the name of Jesus. <clears throat> now pray in the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> Long standing sicknesses, issues. Be free right now. <clears throat> Be free right now. Be free right now. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Harama simbre medeshke tiarono namo shambra makasa brabateshe. Hela ma shambra mokosebre bekeshte. <clears throat> if you've had issues like we just read about long continuance, lift your hands. Somebody by you is going to lay hands on you right now. Long continuance. This thing has been going on long enough. It's time to stop today. Right now, November the 12th, 2016, at five minutes past 12 in the afternoon, we declare it so. Somebody around these people, lay your hands on them right now. Lay your hands on them right now. Come on. Come on. Come on. Those of you that are watching right now, <clears throat> if you're watching right now and that's you, you lift your hand. We set ourselves in covenant agreement with you that this is over. This is over. It stops right now. Right this minute. We receive our redemption. We receive the fullness of what Jesus has done for us. And we rejoice in it, O oh God. We rejoice in it, O oh Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, praise him. Praise him. Our days of sickness and disease are over forever. Forever. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Rejoice. Rejoice. Be of good cheer. Rejoice. For your healing is here. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory. Oh, glory. Woo, glory be to God. Let's give the Lord a shout. Glory be to God. Woo. While Brother Copeland was releasing that prayer over every part of your body, it was very tangible, very almost visible. I could see it in the spirit. The cloud of the healing power of the presence of the glory descended on the entire building like a blanket. And the Lord said to my spirit, there will be great deliverance in this place now in Jesus' name. Oh, glory to God. Deliverances. Deliverances from spirits of infirmity, from harassing, tormenting spirits, from lingering illnesses. And the word of the Lord came to me and said, do you remember what happened to Mary as they went to Jerusalem? The word says the taxation went out, she went, but the Lord, the Lord showed me something by the Spirit. He said, and the days were accomplished while they were there. that she should be delivered. And the Lord said, the days have been accomplished. The time has come while they are there, while they are here. That you should be delivered.
delivered and the body of Christ should come forth. So by word of knowledge, as I looked over into this meeting, praying in the Holy Ghost, I saw last night under the anointing, there's an individual here that has collapsing veins, collapsing veins. You're being, it's a recreative miracle that's happening. One leg is worse than the other, but the significant problem is from the knee down. Collapsing veins are being healed. The, in, the integrity and structure of your entire venous system is being recreated in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Over in the spirit early in the morning, I saw there's an individual that was going to come to this meeting and God was going to work a creative miracle in your left shoulder. But it was right in this area. Now, God gets specific with some things, and I believe I saw by the Holy Ghost that some of these injuries, there's someone here with injuries in the left shoulder area from a gunshot wound. And it's never been exactly right since, but the power of God is coming on you to heal you now in Jesus' name. I saw in the spirit like a CAT scan, and I saw four vertebrae right here in someone's body. It was mottled looking. I said, Lord, are those dark areas cancer? He said, no, that's not cancer. There's a degenerative condition in their spine, and they're being told the nerves are going to be collapsing, the bone is deteriorating, fusion's going to have to come. And the Lord said, I'm healing them now. I am recreating their spine in this meeting in the center Lord, in this meeting, in Jesus' name. He got very specific with me. There's someone with a spirit of infirmity in their digestive tract. And I saw, as it were, little white things as, as their body became where I could see through it. And the Lord said, your long-standing digestive infirmity has been caused by some parasitic activity in your being. That may have been defined or, de or, or, or seen by a doctor, or you may have been wondering, Lord, what is it? You may have been questioning him for a long time. Lord, I don't understand. I'm believing. I'm standing. But you were somewhere, and that parasitic activity got in your digestive tract, and the Lord said, in my name, they die and leave your body today. And you foul spirit of infirmity. You come off the digestive tract of every person in the sound of my voice. Your stomach has had a bulging, almost a burning sensation. It's leaving you. So do not be alarmed in your bodily functions if something unusual and abnormal flushes out. It's leaving you today by the power of Almighty God. Woo! Glory to God. The Lord said, there's someone here with a right knee that's bone on bone. You need a knee replacement, and I'm giving it to you today in Jesus' name. Whoever that is, you just take off, begin to run to the glory of God. And I saw a hip issue where there's someone that may not be wearing a brace now, but you had a brace at one time, maybe in your younger years, but you still have issues. But your hips are becoming normal. God is lengthening and straightening every disorder, and you're going to be absolutely normal from this meeting from this day forward. And the seventh thing I saw by the Holy Ghost was all types and manners of paralysis would be healed. Dead nerve endings would be resurrected. Nerve, vital nerve endings would be reconnected. And all types of abnormalities that have come from strokes that have limited and impaired muscular and, and neural movement. You're being healed now. Now. I say to anyone bound by a walker, a cane, or a wheelchair, rise now and be made whole in the name. Done by the name. Done by the name. Done by the name of the holy child Jesus. Glory be to God. 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 
Glory be to God. I see that person in your lower back. Start moving right now. I see it. That's you. Yeah, that's you. Begin to move. God is giving you a brand new back right now. Begin to move. Do that. Do it now. Right shoulder just opened up. Now that the healing power is moving, begin to do what you could not do. A right shoulder just now opened up. Rotator cuff was just healed in Jesus' name. There's someone with a shoulder injury, and you actually have metal hardware in your shoulder. You're being recreated. Uh, everything's being restored. All movement's being restored. No loss of strength or mobility in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Glory to God, man of God. Woo! Obey God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You know, one of the meanest and most evil things that hell has been attacking the human race with uh, in the last number of years are our mental disorders with uh, the, the neurological diseases, with uh, dementia, with Alzheimer's, with all that kind of thing, to where people are actually becoming imprisoned in their mind, to where they don't know who they are, they don't know their husband, their wife, their kids, their grandkids, and that's an evil, evil thing that hell has brought, and it's time for us to put a stop to that. You know, the Word of God, the Word, the Word of God tells us that we have the mind of Christ. The Word of God tells us, let this mind not be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. The Word of God tells us, I've not given you the spirit of fear, but I have given you the spirit of love and of power and the spirit of a sound mind. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we pray today against Alzheimer's, against dementia, and against every neurological disease in the name of Jesus and command clarity, clarity, clarity to the brain, to the mind in the name of Jesus. We will not be imprisoned. Our loved ones will not be imprisoned in our mind in the name of Jesus. And I command deliverance, deliverance from that attack from hell in the name of Jesus. Satan, you take your trash and you go. You leave this people. You leave this people. Go now in the name of Jesus. Now, I believe you'll be able to go to your loved ones that maybe you're in an institution or in a home or somewhere, and they don't recognize you or don't know you. You go in and lay your hands on them, and you declare that God's given them the spirit of a sound mind and command them into clarity in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give God praise for that. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Gloria, come here. Gloria. Gloria. Gloria, come here. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'll tell you, it's really something to sit next to Gloria Copeland in these services because my notebook is full up with what she's been saying as Brother Copeland's been preaching. <laughs> but it's wonderful. But you said something. We can live 120 years based on the Word the same way we can live healed based on the Word. We can live a hundred and... Word for it, in other words. We, we, we have word for we it. We have word for it. Man's days shall be a hundred and twenty. hundred and twenty good years. Good years. Strong years. If you want to live that long, you don't have to. Yeah, that's... <laughs> <laughs> Gloria, I just believe that you need to stretch your hands out over this congregation and pray over the quality of life. The Lord said, with long, with long life will I satisfy you and show you my salvation. It's not 120 years of pain and agony. Pa pain and agony. It's, 100, it's the quality of life. Would you stretch your hands out to them? Father, we do agree that we'll live long and we'll live strong and that we will be healed. You know, you don't have to. We know, Lord, we don't have to be sick to die. That's right. All we got to do to die is leave. <laughs> when you leave your body, there's no life in it. So we're going to live long and live strong, well and strong in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Praise God. Who, who was it in the scripture? It says his natural strength was not abated. He lived a long time. And his natural strength was not, it didn't was lessen. Moses. Was it Moses? Yeah. Glory to God. Yeah. Okay, Moses. We're going to be Moses people. <laughs> That's Hallelujah. Right. That's right. Glory to God. That's right. Glory to God. 
Glory to God. You're supposed to tell what God does for you, so tell people that you've been healed. Tell them that you're healed. If you know, if it, you tell them what happened to you today, they'll want you to pray for them. But you're a believer, and you got the name of Jesus. You can pray for them. That's Glory right. to God. What if all of us just prayed for one person after we leave here to be healed? Wouldn't that be something? And they were healed too. Oh, Glory to God. Oh, Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. <clears throat> I, what if, we, what if we receive a few testimonies, testimonies about what's been going on? Okay, all right. Someone is healed from an abscess in their mouth right now. You're right, look, he's right down there. He's right down there. That's him right down there. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. On both sides, okay. All right. If you, go ahead and be seated. If you have, if you can tell something has gone on on the inside of you, there's, there is a definite movement of the Spirit of God. We want to hear from you. Just line up on both sides over here. We'll just begin to take some testimonies. We'll begin to receive from the Lord what he's done in this place. And don't let your faith go. There's still things happening right now. <clears throat> there is... <clears throat> there is age reversal taking place right now. Supernatural age reversal. <clears throat> New standards are being set. The bar is being raised. Age reversal is taking place. Thank you, Jesus. Just come forward. Just come forward. Just come forward. Thank you, Lord. Barry, where do you want them to go? This side right here and that side over there. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we give you, Father, glory and honor. We magnify you for what's taken place in here today. The moving of the Holy Spirit. The moving of the Holy Ghost. Complete and total deliverance for your people. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. <clears throat> Praise God. Incurable. You've been told it's incurable. Well, we're laughing at the devil right now. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah. Cool. Has anybody been told that? You are in. Nothing can be done for you. Let me see your hands. <laughs> <laughs> Something's going on right about over yeah, there, yeah. I'll tell you. <clears throat> Let's hear, yeah, Glory. go ahead, go ahead. George, this is Shirley from Baltimore, and she was paralyzed from the neck down. She's been listening to the healing scriptures, and it has come this far where she's here, she's free, and the left side, the Lord is finishing up right now. It usually felt heavy. It was heavy Woo. when I came in with some pain. It was very heavy when I came in with some pain, and then... When um, I think Kenneth was saying about, um, I don't remember, but anyway, he started talking about it, and then my left side of my body started feeling lighter. Yes. Uh huh. And, I, and another thing, when I always go to sleep listening to uh, a scripture or something, and one night the Lord woke me up like three o'clock in the morning, and Kenneth was, I was listening to him, and he said, Shirley, you are healed in the name of Jesus. <laughs> and then um, a few months later, I started walking. I mean, I'm driving, and nobody thought I could do any of this. I was never supposed to walk again. Amen. Praise God. Well, do some walking. Yes. Do Keep some walking up. for us. Hallelujah. Yeah, go on. Woo! Go on. Glory to God. Glory to God. Praise God. Totally free. Totally free. Hallelujah. Completely free. Thank right over God. here. Yes. 
Praise God. Hey, Brother James, what do we have here? God bless you, Tracy. Uh, Pastor George, we've got Mary here from Havity Grace. She had a stroke a little over a year ago, left her with a lot of problems in her body, but she was not able to use her right leg, but just inches she could raise it. But this morning she said there was a change, and I'm going to let her demonstrate what she can do. Let's Praise see God. it. Let's okay, see before, it. whenever I got ready to put on slacks, I had to drop the slacks on the floor to get my leg in it. Well, after he prayed, oh, my God, watch this. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, God. Praise God. We give you a Holy Ghost high five, but you might be laying there for a while. So glory to God. Do it again. Woo! Do, do it, it again. again. Hey, do it again. Yeah. Yeah. You're not the only one who got a new right knee. There's more right knees in the house <laughs> and left knees in Jesus' name. Woo! Glory be Let's give God. God thanksgiving for that Glory one. Praise God. God. Thank you, Praise God. Yes, sir. Oh, Amen. Man. This is uh, Julie Naram uh, from Montgomery Village, Maryland. And uh, she said uh, when you, Pastor George, got up, and was talking about long-lasting symptoms yeah. Uh, yeah. that have gone on for many years. Um, she had itching going on in her arms. She said the itching is completely gone. And uh, she's had back pain that she has gone to a physical therapist for 15 years. Uh, on and off for 15 years, pain completely gone. Praise God. Thank Come you. on, give God the praise for that. Gone. Gone. You know, as we're going through this testimony time, things are happening out there right now. Ooh. Things are taking place in you right yeah, now. And, and These sir, issues of long continuance, things that have been going on for years internet, and years, the world, they are, the they, they've told you that it'll never change. It'll only get worse. That's a lie out of the pit of hell. You are redeemed from the curse of the law, and you're walking in the fullness. I said the fullness, the fullness of the blessing of Abraham. Glory to God. Go. Glory. Sister Gardner, what do we have? Yes. This is Ida Effendi from Arlington, Virginia. She's originally from Indonesia. When y'all had them pray a little while ago for long-term problems. In 2007, she had an accident. Her knee, her back, and her mind were all affected. And she said that all of a sudden the heat started in her head and started going down. And she could tell she could even stand up better. Her knees healed and her back is already better. And she said her mind is so much more peaceful now. Glory, Glory to God. I was delivered from fear the other night. De delivered from, delivered from fear the other night. Glory to God. Praise fear left God. her the other night. Praise God. Yeah, it's a spirit. It's gone. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Thank in you, Jesus. Jesus. Name. Praise God. Brother. Accidents, accidents, the result of accidents. Yeah. So many times these things are lifelong, but not for us. That's right, Brother George. And you know not the reciprocal of long continuance is yeah. when they get better, it doesn't take a long time to recover. That's right. The, that's, the whole that's right. blessing comes to break the long continuance cycle so that we're redeemed from spiritual battles that take a long time to win. So when the healing comes, yeah. suddenly puts them suddenly. back like they would have been had it never happened. Suddenly, suddenly. Father, we receive the suddenlies. Father, we thank you. Now suddenly happens in this working. meeting. There's a working of the Holy Spirit. There's a working of the Spirit of God in this congregation and those that are watching us over television, Thank internet. You, Thank you for the working Thank of the Holy Thank Ghost. You. Thank, Thank you for the, the, the supercharged you, atmosphere of the healing power of God, the Word of God delivered, you, and the signs and the wonders and the miracles following. Oh, thank you, Father, for that. Oh, thank you, Lord, for it. Thank yes. you, Jesus. Pastor David, who do you have here? What's going on? This is Tracy Lancaster. She's from Wardoff, Maryland. And she's had many areas in her body where she's had arthritis. But in particular today, she's been experiencing fingers she could not move. If you look, she's standing here moving her fingers that were not able to move when she came into Praise service God. this morning. Glory to God. <laughs> Praise God. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, move, move your fingers. Yeah. Move them. Move them. That's it. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Woo! Praise. Thank you, Lord. My knee, was swollen. My knee was swollen Thursday, Friday, and I said, Lord, I'm pressing to come in here because I'm coming with expectation. I know I am healed 2,000 years ago, but today I'm whole. I'm walking down here. Hallelujah. Healed, not the same way I came in here in the name Hallelujah. of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let's give God praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. She came with expectation. Hallelujah. She came with expectation. Brother George, we need, to keep, we need to make sure we all keep the switch of faith turned yeah. on. 
Yeah. There was a woman in Nairobi, Kenya, when she was giving her testimony, the Lord stopped me right in the middle of the testimony and said, somebody's blind eyes were open. Faith comes by the hearing of yeah. what Jesus is doing, yeah. and the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Paralysis is leaving. It's, it, may not, it may not even all be gone right now, but that suddenly words for you. It is, it, the time has come for you to be delivered while you're here. While you're here. Life is coming into numbness. Life yes. is coming in. Life, Zoe life. Zoe. The life of God. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead is dwelling in you right now and making alive your mortal flesh. There's life. <clears throat> life. Life. No more numbness. I see in the spirit <clears throat> someone was watching online. And they're now moved. They were, they're housebound. But they are now moving oh, thank you, Jesus. under the glory of God. Thank you, Jesus. Last night we got a report of someone online, <laughs> yep. needed a situation, fell out, got pinned to the floor under the anointing of the meeting last night Thanks. while the word of the Lord was coming forth. And that anointing is right now in that house healing that paralysis. Yes. Glory yes. be to God. I see it. I see yes. it in the spirit. Yes. yes. Go ahead. Oh, Jesus. Good morning. I have here Cynthia Townsend from Philadelphia. And this past summer, she had a box fan that fell on the back of her heel. And as a result of it hitting the back of her heel, she started having such excruciating, she thinks it was her Achilles, she started having such excruciating pain burning and couldn't walk with, without a limp. And she's actually been in extreme pain walking in a limp all the way to this service. But in this service, in the presence of our healer, praise God, she doesn't walk with a limp anymore. The pain is almost gone to completely, and she is just rejoicing at what the Lord has done. She says, I'm coming today to put the devil to shame, to finish the process of what he's done. Come on, do, do some walking, sister. Do some yeah, walking. Yeah, come on, girl. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Come on here. Run back to Praise me. Run God. back to me. Praise run back God. to me. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. What's going on? Uh, this is Margaret from New Jersey. She was having issues with her cervical spine, column five through seven, and uh, bursitis in her uh, right shoulder, and uh, fractured left elbow, completely healed, no pain, and she was completely healed in the services, said none of the word. Completely. Hallelujah. Yes. Completely. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Completely. Completely. Are you, it, you, so you said completely. No pain. Completely. No pain. No pain. No pain. No pain. Nothing. No, no. Uh, no pain, no. I used to sleep at the heating pad every night and just to get rid of the pain, but it's gone oh, in my arm. My, I, my elbow is great. It, it's healed. I'm healed. I'm, I'm, like, I'm like, I can do all this stuff and not. Glory to God. Pain. You know what the Lord yep. told me to do? Put your arm around. <laughs> yeah. Glory be to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Give Woo! God praise, Woo! everybody. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hey. hey. How you doing? Glory to God. Hey, brother, what we have here? We have Xavier and Michelle from Alexandria, Virginia. Last year they were here, and Xavier was suffering from autism, and Brother Copeland prayed for him. And they want to share with you the results, the supernatural results in Xavier's life. And his mom, Michelle, wants to just share oh, a couple yeah. of them. Praise God. Well, I tell you, it's been a crazy year. Um, God is so, so good. So good. Thank you. What I've learned from you, Brother Copeland, Thank is you. consistency. Mom, please be, don't cry. Be in God's word. And every day we pray, he prays. for. We don't pray for healing. We take our healing. Yes. And in the last year, he's brought three kids to Christ. He spoke to a Muslim girl about Christ. His, his freedom, his, the innocence of the word yes. is in him. And we know that he is going to continue in the prophecy that Brother Copeland put over him to speak the word of God to all the world because he has self-taught four languages, Hebrew, Arabic, by the way, Arabic is an evil language. <laughs> okay. He's got the, word, the Holy Spirit in him, and he's self-taught, and that's all God, because I couldn't, I barely speak English and some Spanish. So the Lord is just a blessing. And, wow. Um, so you're saying that from last year, 
there was not only significant, but supernatural improvement. Supernatural. supernatural improvement. Supernatural improvement. And we know every year he's going to get closer. We claim clarity of thought, speech, word, strength, physically, emotionally, and just to let him continue to be free in God's word, not to be inhibited by trend or people or religion. He's homeschooled now because Fairfax County went through this transgender thing and he did not want to be part of it. The Holy Spirit said, don't, don't put him in that system. There's enough out there, keep him home. So we're homeschooling and the Lord is just right there with me because that's, that's not who I am. And the Lord has made me still and I am just doing what the Lord says, which is to homeschool him and be with him and have him grow in the Lord. And, and, and the Lord did that because, and I took your word on the right hip because I've had right hip issues. I had a torn ligament. I couldn't walk. I have a rod on my spine. I couldn't stand up straight. And, and, and I just think that I'm not going to have any hip replacement. I take Father, your supernatural you, hip right here. Thank I'm not going to have further back infusion. Nobody's going to stick any more metal in my spine. Thank you, Jesus. Because this body belongs to God. And Father, I have in the in name the of Jesus, Jesus, we pray over this family. We yeah. thank you for the fullness of what you're doing in their lives. And Lord, we bring children, our children before you, our children's children, great-grandchildren. Lord, in the name of Jesus, the healing power yeah. is upon them and within them. If you're believing for your children right now, raise your hands, raise your hands. Now you take this by faith. Father, we take by faith the fullness of the deliverance for our children. Satan, take your hands off of them. <clears throat> Say this after me. Satan, Satan, take your hands. Take your hands. Off of my children. Off of my children. My grandchildren. My grandchildren. My great grandchildren. My great grandchildren. Release them. Release them. I command you. I command you. Now. Now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now give God the praise oh, for glory that. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sister, look at me. I've got one word for you. Acceleration. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. Okay. Hallelujah. Glory. What is going on here, brother? Well, this is Miss Gloria from Warrington, Virginia. In 1973, she died on the operating table due to a brain surgery and caused long-standing problems, including long-standing paralysis. But today, she came in with collapsed veins and bone-on-bone -bone pain on her right leg. But she says she is feeling better, and the healing power of God is working in her body. Praise Amen. God. Hallelujah. And those Praise were called God. out, collapsing van, uh, veins and bone on bone. That was called out by word of knowledge today. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. it was. And whenever Brother uh, Kenneth spoke about um, disease, sickness, bow, you got to go, I was feeling, I was sensing it was starting to depart then. And then fire hit my spine. Right. And I'm going, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank the Lord. Hallelujah. Ma'am, was it the left leg? It's my left. left leg from the knee down. My left side was totally left side, I saw that by the Holy Ghost. Totally paralyzed. Totally. It's all leaving. Mm. Yeah, that's right. I tell you, we have help here, gentlemen. Y'all better stay close because somebody may not even be near her. The power of God. I thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Ma'am, look at me. In the name. By that name. Oh, glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, pray in the Holy Ghost. Uh, by that name! By the authority of the name of Jesus! Hey, I see something. You know how Peter and John took that man by the hand. Yeah. Go get one of her hands. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Now, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Hallelujah. God. Can oh. you give God glory for the things that are going on here? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
ladies need to check themselves. When I turned and walked away, the Holy Ghost said all kinds of tumors, Tumor. abnormal yeah. growths, anything yeah. in the chest is just disseminating. It's dissolving. They're going to check themselves when they leave the meeting. They're going to say, where did that go? Yeah. They're so caught up in what they're witnessing, they don't realize the tumors are leaving. In the name of Jesus, tumors. Every form of tumor, every foreign thing in the physical body that does not belong there, you are rooted out, dissolved, and dissipated. Lord, I thank you that these physical bodies are tumor-free. Free. 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 Right now. Free in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God, Brother Thank God. you, Jesus. Pastor Tracy, this is Karen from Fredericksburg. Now, this may be the CAT scan the Lord showed you because she had three fusions in her back since 1999. She's not been able to bend without severe pain. And also, before I let her demonstrate that, also she had stiffness and a fusion in the right ankle. She said she was not able to have free motion of that. I've been watching her use complete free motion. I want her to demonstrate what she can do with your back. If you'd do that for us, Karen. Pain. Glory to God. Glory to God. I saw you. I saw you. Woo. Show us, show us, show us, show us. Oh, glory to God. Oh, glory to God. Not now. Not now. Not now. Throw those hands up. Let's get rid of all that hardware in the name of Jesus Christ. Woo. Now you'll be able to do a complete back bend. <laughs> Go for it. Amen. Glory be to God. Glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. George, that was a Holy Ghost limbo. Yes, it was. Right. Yes, it was. <laughs> Glory to God. This is Darlene from Amosville, Virginia. She has had every kind of digestive problem, diverticulitis, sure. Crohn's disease, just awful problem in the digestive intestinal area. She's been sick the whole time she's been here, sick feeling. She came in with headache, pain, everything. <laughs> Right before she came to the meeting, she went to a different doctor, and he said, or she said, the doctor was a woman, said, it's parasites. <laughs> and one of you called out parasites. You did. I saw you. And she had been... all the healing scriptures on a tablet like this <laughs> during the service and when you called out parasites the book jumped out of where she'd put it in front of her and hit her in the stomach the book, the book with the word on it hit her in the stomach and she's totally well <laughs> God is my witness we have help How do you feel now? I feel good. <laughs> I feel good. <laughs> How are you doing, Kathy? I'm doing great. <laughs> Been holding her up like this for years. <laughs> Ma'am, the anointing's flushing every bit of that out of your being. Yeah, yeah. flushing it out. And, and it was a, a spirit that, the Lord said to me. <laughs> That's all, right. That's all right. That's all right. When I saw through that, and I, I saw that, the Lord said, it's a spirit of infirmity. And I want you to understand, one of the reasons your body's reacting so to it, it's an unclean spirit. Not that you're unclean, yeah. but the enemy oppresses. And you didn't invite that in. Take it in on purpose. He's a thief, but he has been evicted by the anointing Praise and the God. authority evicted. of the name of Jesus. That's a good word. Pick that. Let evicted. me say something. And Brother Copeland, the doctor said for her not to eat pork. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Praise God. Glory to God. Hello, this is Mom.
Martha from Bloss Valley, New York. About six months ago, she went down a slide. She was playing with a little girl, and she um, hurt her tailbone real bad, and her whole back, her whole back has been in a lot of pain. And she said, all of a sudden this morning, she said that the pain is left, the pain is gone. And she said also, neurological, she said she feels like she felt heat in her head, and she said she feels like she's thinking more clearly now, and she's believing that heat in her head is even healing cataracts right. that she had been battling. So. Glory be Thank to you. God. We rejoice Glory with you God. today Thank you, in the healing power of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord mm, God. Mm, mm, mm. Thank you, Jesus. What's going on? Yeah. Uh, this is Gina Bento, and she's from Montreal, Canada. And uh, she said Brother Copeland was preaching about how Jesus bare our sins in his own body on the tree. Yes. And she said he got in and he mentioned the word fear. He got into fear. And the moment he mentioned fear, she felt something snap off of her. Like that, snap off of her and break off of her life. Glory. Instantly. I've heard that passage so many times, yeah. but for some reason, God put it in Brother Copeland's mouth to say the word fear. Yeah. Yeah. And at that second, something just broke and something just lifted. And I saw in the spirit some, uh, some darkness just leave me in the name of Praise Jesus. God. Yes. Fear free. Yes. Hallelujah. Free. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Hallelujah. Free. 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 Peace, Woo. peace, Woo. peace, peace. Glory to God. Let's get deep in here, sir, sister. <laughs> Glory to God. I have Jim here from York, Pennsylvania. And Jim was sharing with me this morning that for four years he had to wear a back brace because when he worked to bend over, he would experience such excruciating pain that he couldn't even bend over. But as a result of wearing this back brace, the, the excruciating pain began to spread to his shoulders, his neck. He eventually began to get arthritis all in his upper part of his body till he was paralyzed for two months. And he went to a doctor. The doctor put him on pregazone to, to relieve the paralyzation, to get him back moving again. He went to a herbal doctor. He was diagnosed with having parasites. But this morning, he made a decision when he heard the voice of the Lord tell him to not take the pregazone, to confess out of his mouth that this day he shall be made whole. And he said, as a result of sitting in here, he had gross on his shoulder. He had one the size of a grapefruit that is totally resolved off of his right shoulder. He says other knots on his shoulders are beginning to leave. The pain that's in his back has relieved so much. He's not wearing a back brace today. And he believed that when he came up, glory to God, he stood in faith and said he'd be pain free when he stepped up here to tell his testimony. Look at what God is doing. Glory to God. Look what the Lord has done. Woo. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Do that one more time. Demonstrate to us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo! Give God praise today. Hallelujah. Glory Thank, Thank God. you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Signs and wonders, wonders and miracles. And miracles. Ooh. You know, Brother George, when he said he'd stretch forth his hand to heal yeah. in the, by the name, yeah. it says, then the Holy Spirit came and they were filled and the place shook. Yeah. The Holy Spirit in manifestation is the stretched forth hand of Ooh. God. The stretched forth hand. The stretched forth hand of God is the Holy Ghost moving Thank right you. now. It's the rod that makes everything bow. It's the anointing that breaks the yoke. Come on, when the Holy Spirit's in manifestation, lift there's your hands right now. Let's just, let's just be in a place here with the Holy Spirit, the outstretched hand of God, meeting up with our faith, igniting an explosion of miracles in our midst. Oh, Lord, we receive. We receive. We receive. We receive. Yes, sir. Cool. This is Aline Demarque from Togo, West Africa. She's had a long, lingering situation in her body with her digestive system, and she has said to me that the Lord has healed her of this long, lingering disease. This long lingering effect in her digestive system, she knows in her heart that she is free from this long lingering situation. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Give Amen. God praise Hallelujah. for that. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. We are redeemed from sickness and disease of long continuance. It's over. 
It's over. Say it's over. It's over. It's over. It's over. Praise God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. We have Lisa and Kent from Richmond, Virginia. About 2005, Lisa contracted Lyme disease. And it created terrible stomach problems on the inside of her. Since 2005, she could not eat. Got to the point that she could not walk. She was paralyzed. About a year ago, she said, Lisa said she got a hold of Brother Copeland's teaching. And she has been immersing herself in the word. And today she can eat anything that she wants. Glory to God. <laughs> she doesn't have to be carried around. She is not paralyzed. She, sure. Can you walk a little bit for me? Yeah. <laughs> go, go, go. Praise God. You know, we got authority over everything that creeps, everything that crawls. We got authority over creeps in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. You oh, I am free. Thank you so much. I spend every day with you and you and Gloria and everybody from there. That you were healed 2,000 years ago. That's right. And anything that says otherwise is a liar. And it's not a lot on our bodies. It's Glory, we God. believe it. Praise Glory, God. we receive it. In Jesus' name. Preach it, girl. Hallelujah. Yeah. Wow. This is Nancy Will. Um, she had a tumor removed a year and a half ago, and she's had a hole there, and it closed up last night finally, and there was an infection in there, closed up, and the, the, the fluid quit draining. <laughs> also, last night when uh, Brother Tracy was speaking, pain in her shoulder left completely, and she's believing God for a, a list of other things as well that she, she needs done in her body. As, uh, Mer Ner MRSA? MRSA. MRSA arthritis. Bone on bone knees. She's got three infections in her hip, and she f it feels so much better since she's been in these meetings. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Yeah. Best Hallelujah. Yet to oh, yes, sir. Praise God. Yes, sir. In the name of Jesus, take hold of the fullness of your deliverance right now, right now, right now. Come out, In the name of Jesus. <gasps> Amen. Amen. A total overhaul in Jesus' name of the love and the presence of God inhabiting your body. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And you are walking in the fullness of His glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. On, you rise and be made whole. You rise and be made whole. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. So pretty, take some of pretty. Go ahead and push that. Just you have your way. Have your way. Just have your way. George, what is going on, oh, brother? This is Lamont from Elizabeth City, North Carolina. He's had asthma since he was a kid. He had an asthma attack on Thursday during a workout. He had an asthma attack last night. He said it felt like a knot on his chest and he was breathing through a small straw. But now he said it's gone and he's breathing clear. Yes. More than he has. Breathing clear. Yes, I'm breathing clear. Let's hear it. Yes, I feel so good, man. I've, I, I had asthma as a child. And Thursday and Friday last yeah. night, me and my wife was praying. I couldn't do nothing but sit down, use a inhaler. Then once I use a inhaler, I'm just out of it. I can't do no more. And then we start praying, and it left. It's Hallelujah. It's gone, man. It's, it's gone, man. I breathe so clearly. I feel so good right now. Oh, man, I love you, Jesus. Thank you. <laughs> Amen. Thank you. Woo. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Woo. Woo. 
Man. Glory. Glory to God. Who you got there, Tracy? Oh. Look at him. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Yes. Brother Copeland, this is Rita from New Jersey, and she had a stroke six years ago that left her paralyzed on her left side. But like the nobleman's son that began to amend, this morning she noticed that as, as you prayed the prayer of faith in her left side. Now, she said she's had coldness on that for the six years, not any body warmth. But this morning, and I felt it myself, there's warmth in this. There's a miracle beginning in her body. Glory. 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 Hallelujah. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. The word of the Lord came to me of Psalm 55, 22, where he says, cast your burden on the Lord. He will sustain you. Soon and very soon, this spirit of boldness is just going to cast this sustaining thing away. And the anointing shall sustain you in full mobility. Thank you. Thank you. I receive it. In Jesus' name. Yeah, yeah. Let's. Thank you, Jesus. All paralysis. Leave immediately. Creative miracles. To the glory. To the glory of God. Keep schooling yourself in faith, sister. Glory. Oh, Jesus. Now you begin to do what you couldn't do. Begin to move. Just, just stay under the anointing and begin to move. Begin to do. Just stay there. Just stay there. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Stand by. Hold on. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be alive today. I had a hemorrhagic stroke. And I just have to say this. I, I, you and Gloria got me through a hemorrhagic stroke that they said she's not going to live. I had to have a craniectomy, take my scalp out. And it's all because of you that I'm alive today because you were the one that I, I just clung to your word. And when I was in the hospital, they said every time they came to see me that I, my lips were always moving. So I started years ago, before six years ago when I had the stroke, years ago following in your ministry and God's word, I just have to tell you how thankful I am to you and Gloria, the whole ministry, because of who you are, because of who you are, Kenneth. You, I received you like, received your, in God's word, like I would have never paid Oh, let's give Jesus praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Glory to God. Let's go this way. Okay, here we go. Now, stronger, stronger, Thank much you. stronger. Thank you. Much, Lord. much Thank stronger. You, stronger. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh thank you, Jesus. Bless the name of the Lord. Hurry, Masha. One more time, one more time, one more time. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Oh, glory be to God. Oh, come on, give God praise for what's going on here right now. Free, free, free. Okay, well, we'll keep going here. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We're walking by faith. We're walking by faith. We're walking by faith. We're walking by faith. Receiving a miracle in the body. We're walking by faith. We're walking by faith. Every step is a step of faith. Every step is a step of faith. Every step is a step of faith. We're walking, we're walking by faith. We're walking, we're walking by faith. Oh, every step is a step of faith. Every step is a step of faith. Every step is a step of faith. We're walking, we're walking by faith. Sing it with me. We're walk, we're walking by faith. Stronger? Stronger? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Much so much stronger. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. 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 Come on, let's go for a walk. <laughs> ah, every step is a step of faith. Every step is a step of faith. 
We're walking, we're walking, we're walking by faith. Every step is a step by faith. Every step is a step by faith. Yeah, you're doing good. You're doing good. Look at you. Look at you. Look at you. Look at you. Whoa. Hallelujah. That's right. <laughs> Come on, give God the praise. <laughs> praise okay, God. What's going on down here? I'll take care of you right here. Praise the Lord. Oh, glory. Kathy, what is happening right here? This is Nick from Henry County, Virginia. He's 24 years old. He is a very precious young man. He's a year clean from a hardcore drug and alcohol problem. He's Amen. delivered. <laughs> Good man. And he was born with a degenerate hip problem, his right hip, and it's been deteriorating. And this morning, he felt a tingling. My right hip. I had braces when I was young, and you said it in my, in my right hip. Now, finally at ease. You're the one with the braces? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And you're the heels one now. Yes, sir. Yeah, and uh, he has a job where he's able to do this. Every day on his job, through his earbuds, he listen, listens to Kenneth and Gloria and listens to the word all day long with his earbuds. <laughs> and he's a smart young man. Yes, he is. Finish up, pray for him and finish yeah, sure, up his hip, George. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. That name corrects what the braces could not. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> There's life in that ball, so I can tell you. Yeah. There's life in that hip. Life in those hips. They're normal, equal. Yes. Aligned and in an order. Thank you, Lord. There it goes right there. See that? Free and whole. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. It's making it all. Praise move. God. I, I yeah. Yeah. saw that move. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, I saw that too. A number of years ago, I was in central Illinois, and I was ministering. Under the anointing, the power of God came so strong, you know, you, you get lost in the spirit, you don't even remember it. I was told the story later. There was a farmer, a corn farmer, and I called him up in the healing line because I had a word of knowledge about fungus in the lungs. I didn't know it, but he, was, he got it from wet corn. Take him up. Well, God instantly healed that. He came up for his lungs. Yeah. But it never occurred to me to believe God for anything else. So while I'm ministering, he walked back to the back road just rejoicing over the fact he got new lungs. But years before that, way back in 1978, he was by a combine, and the, and the tractor tire, the combine tire, blew up, exploded on him, and crushed his hip joint. I believe it was his left one. And they, they, they repaired it. He was stiff. I didn't even notice it because he'd come up in the line down here while I was preaching over here. He said, while he was sitting there, he, had, he was worshiping God, thanking God for new lungs. He said, all of a sudden, a hand came, and he's sitting down, and grabbed his leg right here. He said... I said, who's grabbing my leg? And he said, he opened his eyes. It was invisible. There was no physical hand, but he saw the indention. And he said, the hand was so large, it wrapped around his thigh and the fingers came underneath. Wow. Great. Wow. He said, that hand grabbed him like this and started shaking and then pulling. And it pulled his leg out. And he came up and started screaming and running across the front. He said, I've got a hip joint. I, don't, I did not have a hip joint. God gave me a hip joint. And he took off and started running. I sensed that same anointing on that young man as his yeah. leg started stretching out. Yeah. Where'd he go? Where did he, he go? went with Kathy. His name oh. is Nick. Nick. Okay. Nick, Nick's you got, got a new hip. hip joint. Glory. Thank you, Lord. Where, wow. Nick, are you still in here? Right there. Come here. Come here. Thank you, Jesus. Why don't you run on up here? Thank you. Yeah, run, run up here. Praise God. <laughs> Glory to God. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank yeah. you, Jesus. Something happened to you when hands were laid on you just now. 
-hmm. Something spectacular is going on on the inside of you. Mm -hmm. Can you tell that? Can you sense the power of God that's in you right now? It's, and can you sense, you, you, we could see something going on in your leg. We could see it. Yeah, it, was, it was evident. Yeah. Can you move like you didn't move before? Oh, thank you, Jesus. It's not It'll popping. Pop it's not more. popping. Squat it's down for us. Squat down for us. Come on back up. Do that again. Uh, yeah. Could you yeah. do that before? No, he couldn't do it. Couldn't do it before. <laughs> he said it popped like five times just when he squatted wow. down. Wow. Come back. He'd have to have help. Did you have to pull on something to get back up sometime? Yeah. yeah. Oh, glory be Thank to you, God. Jesus. The Pray Lord, young. Brother Copeland, the Lord is activating his ministry assignment in this meeting. When hands were laid on him, that's what you said, something supernatural is happening. Yeah. It's, it's that great, the graces that he was assigned when, from his mother's womb yeah. to carry out in this hour of human history. Jesus. Only Jesus can give it and only Jesus can confirm it. Has the Lord talked to you about the ministry? Yeah. Well, then there you go. Go into it. Hallelujah. Now I have one word for you from the Holy Ghost. Mm. Put your hand to the plow and don't look back. None of that addiction back there matters. Because you're not that person. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for Nick. Amen. Praise Hallelujah. God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Woo! First Corinthians 15, 58. Get it, memorize it, get it down in Say your spirit. First Corinthians 15, 58. Get it, memorize it, get it down in your spirit. And then I got a picture. Well, you're getting everything this morning. You know those green trucks that come and clean up after disasters? You know what their, their phrase is, like, like nothing ever happened. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. Let's go. Yeah. Amen. This is Dolores Stevens, and uh, she's from Virginia Beach, uh, Virginia. And she said that God healed her in her eyesight. And uh, when I was looking at her, she said normally she wouldn't be able to see me, which is not a bad place to start because she said she could see me. Amen. <laughs> uh, but uh, so uh, anyways, but uh, God is increasing her sight, and uh, he did that for her. And the doctor said uh, that she needed a, a knee replacement uh, in her left knee. And uh, someone had called out right knee, and uh, she said, uh, no one said specifically for the left knee. She's still believing for that, and uh, God can heal left knees just as good as he can heal right knees. Amen. Thank so you, uh, we're believing Amen. that she's healed Thank of that. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we <laughs> receive that knee healed Jesus right now name, in the name right. of Jesus. Yes, my knees, totally. Jesus. Knees. Yes. Right now. Knees right in now. Jesus' name functioning Glory properly. To God. Coming into line. Thank you for He did it. Cushion. 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 Supernatural cushion. Being inserted into these knees. We receive it, Father, in Jesus' name. Do you take that today? Do you take it today? Amen. 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 Glory to God. This is Lana from New Jersey. In 2007 in Mexico, she got salmonella typhi, and she spent three days in the hospital and almost died. And she said she's had a lot of things going on ever since then that have bothered her. And she said when he brought out that word, when you brought out that word today about parasites, yeah. she said heat came all in her body, and the Lord told her that she was healed from that, and she just felt that God healed her body of all the symptoms left over from that. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Come out of her body. Thank you, Father. Pastor David. Wow. This is Mercy Wilson. She's from New York, New York. And she's been dealing with for many years. Uh, she's been going to doctor after doctor after doctor and medication after medication after medication. And when Pastor Tracy spoke about these parasites, a warmness showed up in her belly. And oh. she's saying to us that the Lord Jesus has healed her and made her every bit whole. Praise God. Praise God. That's oh, awesome. thank God awesome. for that. Awesome. The presence Hallelujah. of Jesus himself. Yeah. As I was sitting there, my stomach started swelling on my way here. Uh -huh. And as I was sitting there and he spoke of it, I just knew I was healed, but I heard something say, 
daughter of Abraham, you are loosed Praise God. Of, on the Sabbath. And I said, oh my God, I felt this. It wasn't a heat because it's always a heat there. It was a cool came through the heat and my stomach just went down. We all take some of that. Ah, glory to God. Thank every, you, Jesus. Every woman in God. the house, Amen. stand up right now. Every woman in the house, you stand up right now. I declare this over you in the name of Jesus. Daughters of Abraham, you are loose. Loose. Yeah. Loose. Yes. Loose. We take it. We take Cobra. it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Go ahead and be seated. Thank you, Lord. Glory. I have Suda That's here awesome. from Pennsylvania. And this Tuesday, she was scheduled to have a root canal because she developed an abscess on her right tooth, right side of her mouth. And the abscess was a physical lump that she could feel, and it resulted in tingling in her ear. But I want you to know, she, she teaches Bible study, and she believed in her heart and confessed before those Bible students, before she came to this meeting, I will not be getting a root canal. I shall be healed and made whole. <laughs> and I'm telling you in this meeting, she started feeling tingling on the right side of her mouth. As a result, she put her hand in her mouth, the lump in her mouth, the abscess is gone, the tingling in her Glory ears has God. stopped. I'm Glory telling you, God. amen. It's right here, it's right here wasn't it? Amen. <laughs> That's, that's what, and I was saying, Lord, please have them call this out because I need to take it as a testimony to my class. <laughs> you know? Praise so, God. Praise God. It's gone. It's gone. Well, the Lord answered your prayer, girl. Amen. Heaven hears you and heaven hears us and we hear from heaven. Praise Glory be to God. God. Praise God. Woo! This Thank is you, Ernest Bazern from Morris, uh, Town, Tennessee. He has uh, neuropathy in his legs and when it was called out, he started feeling strength in his legs and he's believing for a total healing. Praise God. Thank you, Amen. Jesus. Total, total. Amen. Tracy, he's Amen. bleeding for total. Oh, yeah. Total. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, where are you going? Total. <laughs> total. Total. Come on. Total. 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 Oh, Jesus. Oh. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh. 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 The Holy Ghost is healing you from the inside out. It's not just your physical body. He's working on your heart and healing a broken heart, yeah, healing yeah, disappointment, yeah, yeah, yeah. healing a deferred hope that's made the heart sick and that's kept faith from being able to take hold of your total recovery. But that spirit... <laughs> That spirit of disappointment. That broken heart is healed. Thank you, and your strong spirit will begin to sustain your body. Thank you. And now you'll have hope again for sudden, complete, absolute, like it never happened. Recovery. There it went right there. Praise God. Praise Woo! God. Praise God. All right, two more left, and then we're going to rejoice together. Mighty things are taking place. Go ahead. Hi, this is Miss Sheila from Richmond, Virginia. She, because of different things going on in her body, God's been healing her. But she said today, this is the longest she's been able to stand in two years. She usually has to sit down during praise and worship, but she's been standing since you guys have been praying and standing in the line, and she's been testifying of God's healing power. Praise Amen. God. Give God Amen. praise for Strength. this. Thank Amen. you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, That's here's the last one right here. The last one. David, Ms. let's Kathy, get prepared to just on here? go through the roof. This is Carolyn from Maryland. Amen. Carolyn from Maryland. <laughs> do -da, do okay, go ahead. And she has had severe... Wait a minute, wait a minute. Everybody stand up. Everybody stand up. She has for had this severe one. digestive problems, heart, horrible heartburn and all of that. And this morning, right here in healing school, it all left. Amen. She says Praise it's gone. God. Praise, Praise God. God. 